Today we'll be going over number 1 through 10 in the math portion of the 2018 to 2019 practice ACT. Starting with number 1, we see that Marcus's favorite casserole recipe requires 3 eggs and makes 6 servings. Marcus will modify the recipe by using 5 eggs and increasing all other ingredients in the recipe proportionally. What is the total number of servings the modified recipe will make? A key word we have here is proportionally. Anytime we see that word, we can ask ourselves, can we use a proportion to solve this problem? The answer in this case is yes. So we know if we use three eggs, or if Marcus used three, uses three eggs, that will make six servings. And we want to know if he uses five eggs, how many servings will that make? So we can call that x. Now we can cross multiply. So 5 times 6 is equal to 3 times x. We can simplify from here. 5 times 6 is equal to 30, and 3 times x is 3x. We're solving for x, so we divide both sides by 3, and we get x is equal to 10. And that 10 tells us that if we use 5 eggs and increase all of our other ingredients, we will make 10 servings, which is what this question is asking. So our answer is 10. Let's see if it matches any of our answers over here, and it does. C is 10. So our answer to number one is C. Moving on to number two, the 35 member history club is meeting to choose a student government representative. The members decide that the representative who will be chosen at random cannot be any of the three officers of the club. What is the probability that Hiroko, who is a member of the club, but not an officer, will be chosen? So we know that we're trying to figure out the probability of one Hiroko being chosen out of how many? Well, we know we have 35 members in the history club, but we can't choose any of the three officers. So we have to do 35 minus three, which we then simplify to one over 32. And that's our answer. That's the probability that Hiroka will be chosen out of the 32 possible members that could be chosen as an officer. Let's look at our answers. And yep, it matches K. So our answer to number two is K. Number three. For what value of X is the equation 2 to the 2X plus 7 equal to 2 to the 15th true? Now we can remember our rule that we just cancel out the bases if they're the same. So if we have the same base, we can just cross them out and set the equation equal to each other. Equations equal to each other. So we have 2x plus 7 equals 15. Now this is a pretty straightforward algebra question. All we have to do now is solve for x, which we can do by subtracting both sides by 7. So we get 2x is equal to 8. And we can divide by 2 to solve for x. And we get x is equal to 4. Now, if we were to take this 4 and plug it back in up here, we would do 2 times 4 is 8, plus 7, well, that's 15. So both of these would be equal to 2 to the 15th power. So that is true, and that is our answer. So B, 4, is our answer. Moving on to number 4, let the function f be defined as f of x is equal to 5x squared minus 7 times 4x plus 3. What is the value of f of 3? For these questions, they're just asking, we're replacing these x's with the number here in these parentheses. So in this case, it's 3. So everywhere we see an x in this equation, we're just going to replace that with a 3. So let's rewrite that equation by using 3's instead of x's. So we have 5 times 3 squared minus 7 times 4 times 3 plus 3. And we know that's equal to f of, that, f of 3, sorry. From here, we can just simplify using our orders of operations. So we know we have to do parentheses and exponents first. So we have 3 squared, that's 9, minus 7 times 4 times 3, that's 12, plus 3. Now we can add 
our parentheses and multiply 5 times 9. That's 45 minus 7 times 15. Now we bring the 45 down and we get 7 times 15. That is 105. 45 minus 105, well, that's negative 60. So that is our answer for what is the value of f of 3. f of 3 is equal to negative 60. That's what the question is asking. So our answer is j, negative 60. Number 5, we have a wallet containing 5 $5 bills, 7 $10 bills, and 8 $20 bills. And that's found and returned to its owner. The wallet's owner will reward the finder with one bill drawn randomly from the wallet. What is the probability that the bill drawn will be a $20 bill? So first we ask ourselves how many $20 bills are there possibly? Eight. And how many bills total are there to choose from? Well, we have eight plus five plus seven. We add all of those up and we get eight over 20, which we can further simplify because what number goes into both of those? Four. We divide both the top and the bottom by four and we get two fifths. So the probability that the bill drawn will be a 20 is two out of five. We check our answers and D matches. So our answer to number five is D. Number six, the ABC Book Club charges a $40 monthly fee plus $2 per book read in that month. The EC Book Club charges a $35 monthly fee plus $3 per book read in that month. For each club, how many books must be read in one month for the total charges from each club to be equal? So this, this question, we're going to have to come up with two different equations, one for the ABC Book Club and one for the EC Book Club, and we're going to have to set them equal to each other. So the ABC Book Club, we know they charge a $40 monthly fee and then $2 per book read. So we're going to say X is books read. So $40, it doesn't matter how many books you read, everyone's charged $40. And then $2 additional for every one book read. And we're going to set that equal to the Easy Book Club, which we'll call EBC. And they charge a standard $35 per fee per month, and then $3 per book. So that's three times x. Now, all we have to do is solve for x. So we can do that by subtracting both sides by 35. So we get 5 plus 2x equals 3x. We can subtract 2x, subtract 2x, we get 5 equals x. So we know that the charges will be equal when an individual reads 5 books. So our answer is h5. Number 7, in parallelogram ABCD below, line AC is a diagonal, the measure of angle ABC is 40 degrees, and the measure of angle ACD is 57 degrees. What is the measure of angle CAD? Before we go any further with this question, it's important to note that anytime we see something like this with angle ABC, they're really talking about the middle letter. So they're talking about angle ABC right here. But they're really asking what the measure of that angle is. So ACD, that would be from here to here to here, but they're really talking about this measure. So that's one thing to note before we move on. I'm going to erase those so we don't get confused. But what they're asking in this question is what's the, what is the measure of angle CAD? So we want to know what is the measure of this angle. And since we know that AC right here is the diagonal of a parallelogram, we know that this side right here, this 57 degrees, that has to be equal to this side. So this side is 57, and we know this side, or this angle, sorry, has to be equal to this angle right here, leaving this angle 
equal to this angle. So, again, I'll erase some of these little lines. We know that angle D has to be 40 degrees. Now, we only have one angle left in this triangle. And we know that the inside angles of a triangle always add up to 180. So all we have to do now is do 180 minus 57 minus 40. And we find the measure of our last angle, which is 83 degrees. So we know that this angle measure is 83 degrees. And if we were to label all the angles on the other triangle as well, this would be 83 degrees, and this would be 57 degrees. Moving on to number 8, when x equals 1 half, what is the value of 8 times x minus 3 divided by x? All they're really asking us to do here is everywhere we have an x, we're going to plug in 1 half. So we're going to plug in 1 half to both of the, for both of those x's. So let's rewrite our equation. Let's see. 8 times 1 half minus 3 over 1 half. And a good rule to follow when plugging anything into equations is to use parentheses. Because, especially with negative numbers, if you had, say, negative 1 half. Negative 1 half squared is very different from negative on the outside of the parentheses squared. Because this would result in negative 1 fourth, whereas this would just be 1 fourth. So it's important to really pay attention to that, because that can change your entire answer. Moving back to our actual question, we can do 8 times 1 half which is the same as 8 times 0.5, and that's 4 minus 3 divided by 1 half, and that's 1 divided by 1 half. Can we write this as 1 over 1 divided by 1 half? And a rule for dividing half is to keep the first step, change our parentheses, multiplication, and flip our second step. And then we just multiply and flip across the top and across the bottom. So we get 2 over 1, which is the same thing as 2. And we look at our answers, and D is 2. So our answer to number 8 is G. Moving on to number 9. In the standard XY coordinate plane, what is the midpoint of the line segment that has endpoints 3, 8, and 1, negative 4? When we find the midpoint, all we're really doing is finding the average of both the x and the y points. Starting with x, we have a value of 3 and 1. So we do 3 plus 1 divided by 2. 3 plus 1 plus 4 divided by 2. We know 4 divided by 2 is 2. So our x value is going to be 2. Let's try that with y as well. We do 8 plus negative 4 divided by 2. 8 plus negative 4, that's 4. And 4 divided by 2, that's 2 again. So our midpoint is going to be 2, 2. We look at our answers, and D matches. Finally, moving on to number 10. The fluctuation of water depth that appear is shown in the figure below. One of the following values gives the positive difference in feet between the greatest water depth and the least water depth shown in this graph. Which value is it? So this is a question that can be kind of weird when you read it. You're not really sure what they're asking. But they're really just asking what is the value of the difference between the greatest and the least water depth. So we can look at our graph here and we know our greatest depth, we see graph depth is measured here on the y-axis. We see our greatest depth is up here at 12. And our least depth is down here at 6. 
So all they're really telling us is what telling us to do is figure out what's the difference between 12 and 6. So we do 12 minus 6, which is 6. So the difference between the greatest and the least depth is 6, which is G. So our answer to number 10 is G.